And I'm just tired of it, Tana. I mean, hell, trade him if it's going to be all that. Usa, <sighs> man. Usa. My pressure high, my sugar low, Tana. Okay? What you got going on? Talk about your personal life or something, man. Well, Sick you know, of these sports. You know, I'm always on the run, man. This Saturday, uh, I got an appearance. I'm actually yeah. appearing somewhere in Front Royal, Virginia. Don't get mad. I'm doing someone else's podcast. I told them about you, but they asked for me to come. So in Front Royal, Virginia, from 12 to 2, I'll be, you know, sharing some of our stories on someone else's podcast. Can we just work something out where it's like a buy one, get one free? They pay for you, but I show up for free. You trying to bogo me? Yes. Yes. In fact, Paisano's bogo deal, all you got to do is use the online code Redskins on the app or online, and you got it. Why can't we do something like that, man? Yeah, it works. Pizza and us. So he's saying there's a chance. Coming up on the Santana Moss Show, Travis and I are talking charities and trips. Tana, all the quarterbacks hurt with the Redskins. Cap still ain't got no damn job. However, hope may not be lost this season. And as we always do, we're talking picks. And I'm tired of talking picks because I ain't win one yet. And taking L's this week, it's my body. Look at it. You see it? It's an L. My body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. The Santana Moss Show stars now. My body all over your body, baby. Yeah. It's the Santana Moss Show. Home of your body. Number 89. Santana Moss Show. You know, somebody commented and said I be dancing off key. <laughs> Don't worry about how I be dancing. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss. How you doing, Santana Papi? How you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, man. Usually, I drink from Lil Bicho ass in a victory or in a happy type mood, type of vibe. But right now, this is a depressing drink. Yeah, he's been beaten. We, his ass has been beaten, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can Lil beat your ass play quarterback for this team, Tana? Because, my God, it seemed like everybody is all jacked up, man. I'm scared to put him out there. He might be injured next. You ain't lying, Tana. Well, before we get into all that, man, let's keep it on the positive note. To start this thing, I actually um, just saw something on Instagram about you, this 89 Ways to Give, your charity, your yeah. foundation, of course. But you and Brandon Merriweather are going head-to-head here friendly competition. in a friendly giving way. Yeah. Can you explain it to the people? It's great. You know, it was introduced to me, you know, from my manager, Carmen uh, Fielder, and um, it kind of trickled down from our outside sources with WSA. I'll get into WSA a little later. But um, it's a both an organization that me and Brendan is a part of, and they're doing big things for a lot of the, the retired athletes over the world, not just football. It's world, you know, um, world sports association. So all the different athletes from basketball, baseball, you name it, you you, you name the sport, and they're part of this organization. And me and Brendan both sitting on sitting on, sitting at the chair. We we two members of the desk, and you know, it came to us and said, hey, you know, uh, do you guys want to be a part of this? Friendly competition where you raise money for your foundation and you give it back. You give to those communities that you take care of. And, you know, me, I'm always giving. So yes, you if, are. if it's a way for me to get others involved and giving with me, um, I want to be signed up. And I say, sign me up. So we just started it. I launched my video yesterday on IG. And I think before I even can look at my video again, I was told I had already almost almost a thousand dollars that was donated. That's what's so up, man? It's moving in the right direction, and trust me, we're gonna actually end up having an event, I believe, at DC Prime in Ashburn, Virginia, on the twentieth, if I'm not mistaken. And we're gonna have our toy drive event there. So for everybody, just just stay tuned. You know, I'm gonna be posting that stuff on my social network, and I keep everyone that's uh, involved who who was donated or that gave or just want to be a part of it. I'm also giving back to those folks, too. I'm going to throw a bowling event because I like to bowl. Yeah, he's nasty, you know, I like too, to bowl. He can bowl his ass I'm a, off. <laughs> I'm going to throw a bowling event. It's going to be a nice, fun bowling party for all the people that, you know, went out their way and uh, put a smile on these kids' face, you know, for the holidays. Man, well, shout-outs to you. And, and obviously, you know, your fans and friends and family love you. They show support for all your ventures. 
And also, this is a great cause. So shout outs to you. Shout outs to Carmen, too, your manager, who's also trying to upgrade me. Lord yeah. knows I need help. And shout outs to the World Sports Association as well. Um, you know, you had mentioned them to me and that they'd be reaching out. Yeah, they and so I've looked into them no since doubt. I've talked to you, and they're doing a lot of great things as well, too. So shout outs to them. I look forward to talking to y'all. So Tana, I just got back from the West Tell me West, about y'all. It. Tell me about it. Man, look. So my wife is a UCLA Bruin. Okay, and all her friends are out there in Cali. Gotcha. She was out there forever after college. Well, so she, she was college out there like out a there. decade. Yeah, well, that's what's up. So she was she lived there like a decade, maybe a l- little longer. So since the birth of our son, we haven't been out there, and her friends are dying to see him. A couple have came to visit, like when he was born or whatever. So I was like, look, this was day one. Now. I said, I'm not taking a little newborn baby on a plane. Yeah. I said, when he's one, we can talk about it, right? I'm moving. So now he's 16 months. So, Tana, I wish I had flown his ass when he was just a little infant. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. I think in my mind I thought a, a plane would mess with his brain or his heart yeah. or something. B.S. He would have slept. It would have been great. This little joker here, six-hour flight. Tana, he took us on every roller coaster of emotion you can imagine. He was happy one second. He was chilling one second. Mm-hmm. He was flipping the hell out one second. I, I I don't know, man. I'll never do it again. Next time I fly with that boy, he'll be it. 13. They have, they have stuff for babies for that, though. You know, well, th- then I should I got five kids, and you know hollered, I do a you? lot of traveling. Should have so hollered. I know the different tricks that you can do to to travel with these kids. I so should have rapped to you. I tell you off air, and then you're going to be like, man, we should we, let's go let's go out of town next week, baby. <laughs> So we so we actually stayed in Long Beach, mm-hmm. uh, but her friends are spread all over Cali. So I I saw everything. But you enjoy yourself though. Oh my God, I didn't want, I didn't want to come back. That West had you feeling like man, I'm what I'm doing with myself down. Oh, <laughs> you had to come back to reality. I didn't even do anything. And like I, was, I literally went to the beach all day, every day, and just, just chill, just walked the we- around. Just the weather alone, yeah. and that's one of the things that I get. You know, in Miami and and all, all the folks who know me from you know growing up in South Florida and just hearing that now I'm in Virginia and they like Tana, like what's up with you, and I'm, bro? I understand I could go to that when I want right. to, right? But you know, I, I love it here. You know, but it's it's a peace of mind here. Don't get me wrong. You probably enjoyed your vacation. Yeah, you enjoyed the weather. You you enjoyed how your limbs and your your aches and pains Everything was kind of like n- not even existing. But the one thing about being here and and you're from this area right it's a peace of mind here. yeah so you don't have to worry about the worries that they have on that side even though you look at how they live and you can say that they don't have any worries but trust me everyone has their share everybody does yeah. all right so tana let's get into the redskins speaking of worries <laughs> <sighs> i mean look man i feel like last time we talked it was all good just a week ago all good just a month ago i mean man colt Breaks his leg. Mark Sanchez comes in. I, he looked about what I thought Mark Sanchez would look like, to mm. be quite honest with you. Let's go back to the Monday night game against the Eagles. Uh, first, I guess your thoughts on Colt McCoy, and then second, how that thing played out. Heartbroken. Heartbroken. It was a heartbreaker. You know, one of the things I looked at, and, and, and I'm watching the game, and I'm saying to myself, is like, what – next like you know if anything that can happen worse than that show me now just right. you know just knock me out because I've thought I've seen everything and to see Coke go down with that injury the way he went down with it I mean he basically was running scrambling and slipped up on the grass and failed and somehow his leg hit the guy's shin that was coming to tackle him and I knew instantly that that hurt it was either uh, going to be a bruise or because I've had one of those before and I'm glad my limbs was heavy enough or strong enough that I didn't have to worry about fracturing mines. But I've I've had that plenty of times where someone knee or you know shin hit mines. But to see it happen, and I didn't even know he was hurt until I saw him limping during one series of the you know during the game. And I'm like, man, did he hurt himself on that? Because he play? stayed in, right? Stayed in, completed I think two passes or something uh. like that. But it, it it was definitely a heartbreaker, and you just wish that. First thing I said is that. Here's Colt in a situation for the second time where he's got a chance to be the guy. Yep. I remember him getting his opportunity before in 2014, my last season with the team, and he had worked hard for that opportunity. I was on scout team with him. 
me and Colt lit the scout team up weekend. I talked to you about me and him <laughs> yeah. out there having fun with yeah. it. And when he finally got his chance, I remember I played in the game or two with him when he got his chance and caught some passes from him. So, And I, I think Colt might be a guy I never counted on that list of quarterbacks that I played with. Might wow. be 15. I might be lying and saying 14 in 14 years. Might be 15. So uh, getting back to the story, I believe Colt got his opportunity. We won. He won his first game in Dallas, and I think we lost a game or two with him, and then all of a sudden he hurt his neck, and now mm-hmm. he's down again. And he had moved into the slot to where you probably wouldn't even heard about Kirk, you know, or Kirk wouldn't probably have the, the uh, it was success. Colt's that he, chance. It was Coke's chance. It was his chance to be the guy. Right. Kirk was going to be that the odd guy out because RG, they wasn't sure about Kirk at the time, and it was Coke, and Coke was doing well enough to be that guy. And so just to see him get his opportunity again, out of all these years sitting around waiting, coming back this season, signing, I think, a year deal, and finally getting his opportunity. And we knew, I know, just watching his game, that he knows the offense well enough yes. to go out there and be productive. And even that game, he was like four for four or four for five, yep. I believe. And then he goes down with an injury like that, man. So it, it's just a heartbreaker, man, to know that this guy has stood the test of time, uh, being one of the uh, reliable guys you can you know, call on when the time was needed to know what he has to do and do it well enough and to see him go down to injury again. As you saw the rest of the game play out, because to me, Mark Sanchez was just, I mean, he might as well be Tom Cruise. It was Mission Impossible in that game on the road, on that stage. Uh, Did it go the way you expected it to go? To be honest with you, (laughs) to be honest, before that game even started, I had an eerie feeling about it. Yeah, I I literally said that Hope can go out here and put up points. We know that he can do that. The defense has to play lights out in, in order for these guys to win. You couldn't see another 400-plus yardage performance by the opposing offense and think that we had a chance to win. Right. And here we are, Mark Sanchez in the game, and that half is 14-13. And you look at it and said, the second half is going to be the clue or the key to see if these guys stand a chance. And it got crazy in the second half. These guys controlled the ball their entire time. And with Mark Sanchez even being in the game, I'm pretty sure no fan gave them a, a chance to really say, okay, they had a chance to win this game. But just knowing that he 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 lack of preparation, they wasn't even prepared for him to play in this game. You know, you hear the coach say that I didn't even have plays, you know, designed for him. I threw I threw something together and put it on a put it on a, a wristband and say, you know, in, in case we need this, right. this is going to be Sanchez's plays. And then you find yourself in the game with Sanchez, and he looked pretty good for a moment. You know that that two minute drive. To me, one of those things I like about guys like Sanchez, he reminds me of a guy, and not saying that gamers are like, but I remember having Jason Campbell, and it seemed like our plays wasn't working with him. I don't know, for some odd reason. And I was just talking to Lito Shepard a couple of weeks ago, and Lito said, Tanner, to be honest with you, when we got ready to play you, our coach always said that the best situation we could be in is having a quarterback that don't know how to get the ball to 89. Mm. He just told me that two weeks ago. And I'm sitting there saying, like, what? He said, yeah, man, we knew Jason couldn't get you the ball because he's either going to overthrow you or not throw it to you when you open. And I'm like, wow. wow. So, you know, and at the time he was a baby. He was young. He was he was young. And Jason, he probably remembers this more than anybody because he was doing it. He used to hold on to that ball. If you wasn't open like he wanted you to be, he wasn't trying to take those chances. And that's just being a young guy in the game not really knowing. So I talk about Sanchez because I bring up Jason because when it comes to Sanchez, those guys are better with the faster tempo. Mm. Speed things up, give them something that they know, five or four plays that they can you know, consistently call, and let them play football. Now you don't have to worry about that defense setting. You don't have to worry about you having to worry about seeing all these guys open. It's basically designed for you to have somebody open all the time. And when I was watching that game, I'm like, let's just go hurry up the entire game because now you have Sanchez in the game. The rhythm. Get those guys off rhythm. Right. Don't settle him down. Right. He's better with those guys being not ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not a head coach. I'm not That's a coordinator. Coaching. I'm not none of that. But I just felt like at the time, knowing that Sanchez can be productive at times and can make you know mistakes at times, I think his whole career has been he can do some things great, but he can make a lot of mistakes. And I'm saying right now, to me, going to that two-minute uh, offense right before the half, that was the best thing I saw from him. I remember in 2007 in Dallas, we didn't do anything, and we got into a two, two-minute two drill with uh, Jason Campbell, and we ran it for the entire game because that was more productive than anything else he can do. So, 
you know, I think that's something that the coaches should look into. Let's speed things up for for the defense and have them off balance instead of having our guy sitting there and settle, and then you getting a chance to settle your defense and attack him. Santana, as a guy who played the game, can you please break down to me, a fan of the game, how in the hell the Redskins don't sign Colin Kaepernick to back up Mark Sanchez? Because i got to tell you something right now. I hear Jay Gruden say, well, you know, his style doesn't necessarily mesh with what we do, and he doesn't understand the verbiage, and, you know, he's got to learn the offense and all this. And and I think, Tana, I can literally tell Colin Kaepernick to play backyard football, yeah. and he'll be better than Mark Sanchez on this team, in my <laughs> opinion, with the arm strength, yeah. uh, the ability to run. And I think there's this false narrative of him that he's not smart enough to retain an offense or to learn it quickly. I think you could salvage this season with Colin Kaepernick behind center. Can you tell me why it makes sense for them not to do it? Because I don't understand it. I don't know if it makes sense for them not to do it. I I, I truly believe what you're saying is true. I, I would rather them have brought in him than the guy that they brought in to be the backup because worst case scenario, the this guy, he knows how to play the game. Also, he has been sitting on the couch for a while now, so that's something you have to deal with or worry about. But worst case scenario, you put in a little RPO in there for him and let him just run with the ball. That's what I'm saying. You know, worst case scenario. You right. know, now you have a, a dude threat in the backfield. You yes. have to worry about him and AP, and may, it may open up things for AP. Right. I truly believe, and you know, this is just my opinion. I truly believe that the entire, every team on the, every team in this league is kind of scared to to um you know um pull that trigger on him. I believe because they know what's awaiting if they do. That's my opinion. I I think that they feel that the the reef they are going to get, the slack they are going to get from the outside world and from the fans base and the people who against what he's you know all about will hurt their team more than bringing a guy in and giving a guy a chance. That's my opinion. Yeah. And so you think it was politics. I, I, I can't think it's disagree very with political. That. I think it's very political because yeah. at the end of the day, it's a lot of guys out there that you can also say need an opportunity. Sure. You sure. know? And everyone is saying Colin Kaepernick's name because of what he went through of not being, you know, uh, uh privileged enough sure. to have the opportunity. I get it. But I truly believe that if he was in a different situation when he left this game, as far as his game itself, we won't be having this discussion right now. I think his game alone at that point of time when he left this league was, okay, he could be a backup. He probably was not the guy who took him to the Super Bowl, but he's going to be a backup. Now a team has to say to themselves, okay, if he's going to come in and be a backup, do I want to deal with what I'm going to have to deal with from the outside the, sources the backlash and the backlash right. and everything having my backup getting this kind of heat every week about what he's going to do before the game or what he's doing during the, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I truly believe it's a business decision, and that's why teams are kind of staying away from you it. You may be right, because from a football standpoint, it doesn't make sense don't to me. Make sense. But it don't I'll make say sense. this. I, I do think <laughs> if you bring Colin Kaepernick here right in his own backyard, the president's going to tweet and go Oh, it's going to be crazy, it. and that's another reason. But I'll tell you this. I believe the Redskin fan base would embrace him and welcome him with open arms because of two things. A, when you look at some of the decisions this team has made yeah. when it comes to character, yeah. okay, stay with me. If you're going to open your arms and say, I'm a Redskins fan regardless, okay, well, that happened. So you're going to have a problem with bringing in a guy who protested peacefully? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. And from the second standpoint, I think they put their arms around Colin because they know – this is a guy that could get us a couple of wins, give us a shot to maybe get in the postseason and win this division. I truly believe with the, all the slack they got thrown in where last week with the um, claiming Ruben situation, yes. they would have been embraced a little differently if they would have opened the door up for Carlin. Carlin. In fact, I think I, it would have been a that. it would have been a, a great opportunity to do that. It would have been a way to say. Okay, hush, that's right. Hush your mouth. We right. went out and got we him, everybody. and we went out and got him. So Absolutely. Shut up now. Now we're giving equal opportunity. You I know? agree. And so that's what I believe. But Me I too. think also when it comes down to this game, it's so political, man. I've been in that seat before. I've I been know. in the seat where I, I didn't play the game because of you know you know political politics, politics reasons mm -hmm. than it was because of my game. Sure. So to see things pan out the way they do from time to time, I, I don't 
really even trip about yeah. it because I know it happens, you know, daily. It's a flipping shame. All right. Giants, Redskins. It's here. Fans got to – we need – we listen, HTTR Nation, we have got to have you this week. Am I wrong, Tana? We have got we to do. have you this week because – you need every edge you can get. And I'm not saying this is the Super Bowl Giants here we're playing, but my God, but we are down a little to higher than right? us. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we, we got to have this one, they Tana. A, they have a little more pep in their step than us. And Tana, we lose this game. The season's over. It's a wrap already, though. You think? And I hate to be the guy to say that. It's a wrap already. I'm saying that because I know everyone else is thinking that. Now, I've been saying time and time again, do I believe that? No. You know I don't truly believe that. Do I want that? No. You know I don't want that. But these guys have to have that in the back of their head. Every player in that team, on that team in that locker room, has to have the notion of saying that this is not, it's nothing given to us no more. We've been sitting in a situation from weeks, from months ago, that we had everything that we could possibly want. Now, along with having everything we could possibly want, as far as the position in, in the division, we've had injury after injury after uh. injury. Nothing they can do about that. That's just bad luck. <laughs> bad luck. Honestly. So with all that said and done, it's still a few of you guys out there playing. It's still a few of you talented guys that some of you may be pro bowlers that has a chance to be that guy to make a difference these next four weeks. And that's the thing I say. You know, uh, I was just sharing these, these, same, words with, uh, these same, same words with Portis. And Mike Portis, remember that time when it was just me, you, and Cooley on offense? And, mm. and you remember that time when sometimes me and you just get in our little huddle together? I'm like, me and you, bro, let's do it. You know, and I say it was like watching bad boys almost when me and Portis played together, honestly. Because I would catch a pass, and the first brother would make that that block for me as Portis out the backfield. Ooh. And it got me into a rhythm saying that I know I can count on my brother. And then I see him running the ball. I'm I'm chasing somebody across the field to make sure I could be that guy to spring him. So these guys have to kind of bond together differently. I don't know what way they have been thus far. I understand they've been playing together the whole entire year, but you have to find a way to really, you know, feed off each other. If AP is running as well as he's running, feed off him. When you see him take that thing, catch that cow. You know, I say that a lot. Jump in that same <laughs> ride. I need, I need mine next, coach. You know, someone has yeah. to jump up and be, you know, the guy that say, I'm going to take these things, I'm going to take some of this stuff that's in my hands. I remember at times, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell this story because it's funny. I was a guy, I hated being a rah-rah guy. I'm not a rah-rah. I'm not a guy that's going to tell you what we need to do to go out there and play for right, 60 minutes. Right, I shouldn't have to tell you that. We should be ready to go out there and do it. And being a veteran, getting up in those years, uh, we had a couple of veterans that was always the guy that get in front of the team and talk. Oh, Lord. We had a guy, Randy Thomas. Randy used to be, Tanner, c- Tanner, come up here and say something. And I'm the wrong guy to say something because I don't say nothing right. Everything is a bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> so I got up there and I'm hoping they bleep this when when I go to talking. <laughs> and I'm like, F- this, sh-. we need to go out here and kick these mother. <laughs> and everybody looked at me like, like you're that dude. And I'm walking off and I look back and they still looking. Yeah, let's go, Ten. I feel you. And, but that's how, that's all I got in me. That's <sighs> what I'm. If you if you had to cut me open and open me up, that's how I feel. Right. I don't say it because it's not appropriate all the time. Right. But the way I feel, if you cut me open and my words can just come out, that's what I'm thinking. Get the f*** about that man over there. Right. I don't care. Right. And then they give me me, and I show you. You know what I'm saying? And you can see that with a smile on my face. <laughs> that's, I can say that with a smile on my face because I really don't care. Like, I never worry about things I couldn't control. Worry about me. Yeah. So as long as I was prepared, you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So these guys, I'm saying all this I'm saying because these guys have to prepare to go out there and win the game regardless of who has that, who's that quarterback, who's in the backfield, who's on the other side gotta of that go. defense. You got to go. You got to do it. And so the fan base, the people in the world, they're counting you out. I'm counting you out. I'm saying it's, it's no chance. I'm saying it because you're on your third, third quarterback. We was barely giving you that chance, the opportunity, with your second one. It's right now, tough sledding. So what are you going to do? Holy tamale. Get get yourself a drink. Listen, yeah, I mean, let me let, let me explain to y'all at home something about Santana Moss. This is the Gemini coming out. This brother right here is R and B smooth. <laughs> but if you cut him open, Tupac bleeds out of this man. <laughs> Did y'all just see how he flip? He goes oh. from smooth R and B soul voice to <laughs> this shit, <I'm> <laughs> God damn, man. Oh man, no, I'm just being real, man. <laughs>
feel like some of these guys, and and that's why I feel Swearing's just pain at time. Yeah. I, I, you know, at times they say he says a, a says a little too much at times, but you need it. You He's need real, it. bro. He's too real. He's and real. And I think everybody's not on the same page, and that's yeah. why he comes across wrong at times. By the way, shout outs to CP, man. Yeah. Tanner brought up CP, how he used to run across field and lay brothers out. CP, you know you're always welcome here. Come back. Last time he was here, he had that fresh Ichiro Marlins jersey on. That's my man right there. He had them shades on like he was straight out of Gucci. CP is too (laughs) clean. All right, let's get into our picks. Tana for the week. We'll start here. Your former mates, the Jets at the Bills. Bills' defense isn't half bad, Tana. Who do you like? Bills' defense has been doing it the whole entire year. The offense has been the real reason why they haven't been Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, victory lane that Mm -hmm. much. But I say against the Jets, Oh, Gang Green, you know I, I have a little love for I you still, you man. But the Bills, I, I give it to the Bills, man. They've been doing a little better than you have thus far this season, at the end of this season. So it's the Bills. Completely agree with you. Uh, Saints at Bucks, who do you like? Saints at Bucks. Oh, come on now. Are we for real? Saints. I like the Saints, too. I like the Bucks to cover. I've been riding them the last few weeks, and they've been covering for me. Might Keep it up. Bet. Uh, Patriots at Dolphins. It's always tough. The Patriots have a hard time I in know. South Florida. I Who don't know doesn't? If, I don't know if it's going to be one of those times this this outing, but um, I'm going to say Patriots, but I won't be surprised if the Dolphins squeak it out. I think that whole team goes out when they're in South Beach except Tom Brady. He's the only one that is probably sleeps in like some, si- some sort of <laughs> hyperbaric chamber. I, you know what? I'm going Dolphins. Um, Ravens at Chiefs. No. You know, if you talk to anyone, if you listen to anything when it comes to, um, you know, uh, any analysts out there that's talking as the game, everyone's saying the Ravens are going to come in here and surprise the world, shock the world, and beat the Chiefs. They say they have they have the recipe on defense alone to stop mm. these guys. With their running back situation now, that yep. might be true, you know. All right. Because now it's running Green back Hunt's by out. community, yep. you, know, you know, by – you know, by community, all these guys are getting yep. opportunity to run the ball, and it's hard to believe you can be. Uh, you got to be a dual threat offense True. to be able to move it up and down against the Ravens. I would easily say the Ravens have a chance, but they're playing in Arrowhead, right? In tough Arrow- place, tough place to play. So I'm getting out the Chiefs. I'm with you. I'm going Chiefs. I like the Ravens to cover. I like where you were going with that. Colts at Texans. Now that's a big game, dude. It's it's crazy because the Colts is just riding high, and then they go and lay a goose egg against the Jags. Yep. And the Jags is my defense, and that was I took them off Ooh. of my fantasy defense that weekend and put the Redskins up. The only reason why the Jags have been getting killed the entire year. So I'm like, you know what? And I should have known the Redskins. That's my only chance to go Jags or eat the Redskins. I should have kept the Jags because at least they weren't giving up 400-something plus yards a game. Redskins in the last five games has been averaging, allowing teams to average 400 plus some <sighs> yards. But we're talking about the Colts, and for them to lose to these guys, didn't score a touchdown. Um, Luck threw 52 times, and they didn't score a touchdown. You think he could have that performance in Houston and and win? Uh, I give it to the Texans. These guys, what, nine in a row right now? I see 10 in a row. I'm going Colts, and I'd like to take low beat your ass and pour out a little liquor mm-hmm. for Santana's fantasy team, the Leesburg Pikers. He getting killed. You know I mean? told his ass, don't name him that dumbass name. He did, and they've been cursed ever since. What's your record, though? If I'm beating you? I'm in. Let's move on. Falcons at pa- <laughs> Falcons at Packers. <laughs> I got real political. You know how them politicians don't answer. He ain't sh- want to say. Politicians will say, let's move on to the topics at hand. Falcons at Lambeau taking on the Packers. Both of these teams suck. I just want to say that. Both of them suck. I'm not even giving the Packers a chance with all the moves that they do. Move. And guess who's my who my fantasy quarterback is? Hey, a- Aaron. Yeah, I swear. Or oh, uh, do they beat the Packers? No. I mean, do they beat the Falcons? No. Falcons win. All right, I'm going Packers. Panthers at Browns. I kind of like this game. Panthers, if you've noticed, have been on a free fall, bro. I can't believe it. They falling. I thought the skins fell from grace. These you guys are falling. And they're healthy. And they still falling. Well, they're they're missing Olsen. Hurricane. But he just left. he just went out a week True. ago. So I'm going to say the Panthers have enough to, to take down the Browns. Ooh, I'm living on the edge. I'm going Baker at home. I like the Browns. I think Baker's forever cursed this year. Think? Yeah, I think so. I think he, he handled that situation with him and he was so wrong. Yeah, that, that was, that, that that was that cruddy. It was funny to me what happened the week after with his success the week before. 
the week after you saw him still be successful throwing the ball around because he's a baller. He's right. a baller, but he handled that situation so wrong that it yeah. kind of bit him in the behind. It was dumb petty, you know. Right? So it was petty for no reason. So uh, not saying that's going to stop him from winning or losing. I just feel like he should have. He, he was at a moment where he showed his age. I agree. You know, he it shows him mature. Yeah. Uh, Broncos and Niners. I'm going Broncos, right? <laughs> Broncos, bro. Uh, Bengals at Chargers. God, the Bengals are finished. Chargers. Chargers. Right? I like the Chargers. Uh, Lions at Cardinals. Cardinals going to win. Woo. The Lions is trash. You hear me? Yeah, they suck. Cardinals going to win. God, I want to roll with you on that. I'm going to take the Lions, Cardinals to cover. Steelers at Raiders. It's hard to believe the Steelers just dropped two playing as well. They've been playing on the offensive side, but I'm going to go Steelers. The Raiders, they've been done since been done. Say, not since been done. It was well done, and somebody put them in there and made them charcoal. <laughs> well, you just as rude as you want to be. Eagles at Cowboys. That could be the division. I want the Eagles to win. I want, Hold on. I want the Eagles to win. They playing in Jerry's, Jerry's world, so... Damn, I want the Eagles. I'm going Eagles, man. Ah, damn, Let's he go. wants the Eagles to win. Let's go, man. Come on. Uh, I hope it ends in a tie because I hate <laughs> both, both of, of you. Them. Yeah. Uh, I'll go. God, dog. I'll go Eagles. All right. Uh, Rams at Bears Sunday night. We just talked about big game. Trubisky's back. How the weather field in Cali, and these guys got to go to this. The <sighs> yeah. Hawk. Yeah. You know the Brutal. frozen tundra. Brutal. Uh, I say Rams win. Trubisky could be back all he wants to. The Rams will win the game. You're going to outscore him. You're going to outscore him. You know what? I'm doing it. The Bears defense struggle with the Giants. The Bears. Uh, Monday Nighter, your old buddy, Kirk Cousins, hey, goes Seahawks. to Seattle. Seahawks. It's a tough place to win there, huh? Tough place to win. For some odd reason, I feel like that stuff has carried over with Kirk when it comes to the big game. Uh, he's not the reason why they're not winning these big games because everyone's no, going to put it on the quarterback. Yeah, he's not. But their defense isn't that well this year, and, and the Seahawks have been playing some outstanding football, especially I, on the offensive side when they really don't have much, and that's why I get them to not. I hope my boy Rob is taking notes this week because we have a lot that we disagree on. Mm -hmm. I'm going Vikings. Just because this feels like a playoff game to me, and I don't ultimately think the Seahawks will make it. I think the Vikings will. And so they just got to have it more, quite frankly. Uh, so I'll go Vikings on the road. They got to want it. Tough place. They got to want it. They want it. Tough place. All right, taking L's this week. I'm going to take this one, buddy. I'm going to give it to my body, mm. right? Here's the thing, Tana. I keep myself in shape. Mm -hmm. I eat right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have my vices. However, I keep it together. Mm -hmm. And every day I run or I lift or I box or I do something active. My body hurts. I, I can never figure it out. My knees hurt, my elbows, my shoulders. I'm like, damn, man, am I that old? What's up? I got that many miles. <laughs> I go to the West Coast. All of a sudden, a brother feel like he's 21. I'm moving. I'm grooving. I'm flexible like Gumby out of nowhere. I'm mm. like, what's going on with my body? Right? I'm in the air. So I'm in the air. I fly back home to the East Coast. Everything hurts again. Back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. I mean, I just can't win, man. Can't this win, East bro. Coast weather, man, got me all rickety. See, you know, that West Coast weather, man, they it stay polluted. Yeah. With that good broccoli. So at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> there were dispensaries everywhere I looked. You was basically <laughs> indulging in second hand and you didn't even know it. <laughs> you did take a L. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Santana Moss Show <laughs> podcast, a.k.a. Half-Baked. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss, we appreciate y'all. He didn't even know it. <laughs> he ain't even know it. Go follow us wherever great podcasts are available, because that's what we are. It's a Santana Moss Show. Former of the ball Number 89, hustle all the time. Travis on the right, hot mic on the left. Every single week, it's a lyrical fact.